Hello friends, welcome to my channel. So our today's video lecture is on craniosynostosis syndromes. I know syndromes are a bit of a headache, but yes, specifically craniosynostosis syndromes are very very important for your exam. So pay attention and understand it very well, okay? If you are new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. I'm sure my videos will help you boost with your MDS preparation. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook where we do daily image-based questions. It will help you to strengthen your concepts and understand things better. Also, to get a free PDF of any of my video lectures, you can get it from my Telegram channel. So now, any further ado, let's get started. So what do we mean by craniosynostosis? Okay, let's break this word into two, cranio and synostosis. Okay, so cranio simply means cranial bones or a part of cranium, right? And synostosis means fusion of the bones. Okay, synostosis means what? Fusion or sinking of bones. So a premature fusion of one or more cranial sutures often resulting in an abnormal head shape. So today whatever syndromes you are going to study they all fall under this category. Okay, This craniosynostosis would be the feature of each and every syndrome. So why this craniosynostosis occurs there are two reasons. It can occur due to the primary defect in ossification or to the failure in bone growth. So uh, the second reason is more common, failure of bone growth. So what are the syndromes? Craniofacial diastosis, mandibulofacial diastosis, perirobin malformation, Eppert syndrome, chondroectodermal dysplasia, cledocranial dysplasia, trichodentoosseous syndrome and Down syndrome. Guys, all these eight syndromes have craniosynostosis as their feature, okay? They fall, they are also named as craniosynostosis syndromes and they are very, very important for your exam. So, in this video lecture, we are going to do this four syndromes, okay? And in the part two of this video, we are going to talk about the other three syndromes. Down syndrome, we have already covered. I will give you the link of the video in the description box below. So, do check it out, okay? So, let's begin with craniofacial diastosis, famously known as Krausen disease or Krausen syndrome, okay? Now guys, let's understand this term diastosis, okay? What do we mean by that? Diastosis means it is a disorder of the development of the bone, basically which is affecting the ossification of the bones, okay? When you know the terms right, when you understand it, then it would be easy to remember the features, right? So, it is inherited as autosomal dominant disease and mutation of the FGFR2 gene could be responsible for Krausen syndrome. This is important for your MCQ. And here the coronal and the sagittal sutures are obliterated. Okay, There would be, as you can see in this picture, okay, the coronal suture over here and the sagittal suture over here. There would be the early fusion of these two sutures. Okay which gives rise to Krausen syndrome. Clinical features Facial deformity is seen at birth. Forehead is high and wide. Guys, do correlate these features in the uh, pictures given over here, okay? As you can see, the forehead high and wide, okay? Then, pseudoprognathism due to hypoplastic maxilla. As you can see, pronounced chin, right? Pronounced mandible. So it is pseudoprognathism because of the hypoplastic maxilla. Then deviation of the nasal septum, wide beaked nose. It is uh, ev this wide beaked nose is evident here in this picture. Hypertellurism, guys. What do we mean by hypertellurism? It is mainly the increased distance between two body parts okay so this hypertellurism in krausen syndrome is seen with eyes ocular hypertellurism is seen here there is increased distance between the two eyes 
and eyelid seems anti-mongoloid. Now what do we mean by anti-mongoloid? While studying oral pathology, you need to be clear with all these terms because it will come often while studying the syndromes, okay? So you are clear with the hyperterrorism. Then second is anti-mongoloid slant, which means lateral canthus is lower than the medial. You can notice here, you can notice here, okay? Uh, this is the lateral canthus of the eye, okay? Which is at lower level than the medial canthus and upper eyelid mimicking frog face are observed okay so frog face you need to remember this so guys here in this picture you can notice the anti-mongoloid slant okay this lateral canthus is at lower level than the medial canthus which makes it anti-mongoloid slant okay and the opposite of this would be mongoloid slant so there would be also vision and hearing impairment, malocclusion, dysphasia, which means speech defect, short stature, no physiologic spinal curvature, acanthosis nigricans and mental retardation. Acanthosis nigricans is nothing but the thickening of the skin, okay, in the axillary part. Now the radiographic features of Krausen syndrome Radiographs of the skull revealed obliteration of sagittal and coronal sutures as we have discussed and uh, it has hammered silver appearance or beaten metal appearance or it is also known as copper bitten appearance okay so remember these three words okay hammered silver appearance or beaten metal appearance or copper bitten appearance okay as you can see here in the radiograph okay so such image can be asked in your image based questions also okay the second syndrome is mandibulofacial diastosis okay now you know the meaning of diastosis right it is also famously known as trichocoline syndrome it is inherited as autosomal dominant and gene for trichocoline was mapped on the chromosome 5q32 and q33.1 so do remember the locus if possible it might be asked in mcqs and here the typical peculiarity of uh, trichocoline syndrome is bird like or fish like face Guys, I have added images directly from the Schaeffer's because there are high chances that, that in your exam, they might keep the same image. So, it would be easy for you to identify them, okay? So, this is the picture of Trichocoline syndrome, okay? It gives typically a bird-like or fish-like face. Now, what is the peculiarity of mandibulofacial diastosis? As the name suggests, mandibulofacial, okay? So, there would be hypoplasia of malar bones, okay? These cheekbones, they are less developed or undeveloped in these cases. Now, the clinical features, okay? See, here you can see the anti-mongoloid palpebral fissures very clearly, okay? They have also shown it over here. Uh, lateral canthus is at lower level than the medial canthus, okay? Which makes it anti-mongoloid. Then, uh, microotia, which means malformed ears, macrostomia, and uh, retrognathia is seen, okay? Uh... And cleft palate might also be associated. And the coloboma of lower eyelid, which means full thickness defect of the lower eyelid, okay? For which we use the term coloboma of lower eyelid. So, these are the features. Apart from this, there would be hypertellurism, okay? As you can see, there is increased distance between two eyes, okay? And uh, tooth agenesis and discoloration would be seen. Downward slanting of lower palpebral fissure as we have seen. Malformation of ears, okay, and parrot beak nose. And underdeveloped mandible and hypoplasia of the zygomatic bone and maxilla. This is the peculiarity of trichocoline syndrome, okay. Now, in the radiographic features, you can see the hypoplasia of the malar bones, okay? Cheek bones are underdeveloped 
and mandibular abnormalities would also be seen and hypoplasia of the mastoid process so this three features are seen in its radiograph now peri robin malformation triad of peri robin you have to remember it and it is quite easy also the mnemonic for which is m c g which means micrognathia small jaw and cleft palate and glossoptosis now in the peri robin patient does not have large tongue but because of micrognathia glossoptosis occurs okay here you can see the micrognathia small jaw with receding chin right and tongue that is large compared to the jaw but it is not actually large but it, compared to the jaw it is large resulting in airway obstruction so obstructive sleep apnea is also the remarkable symptom of peri robin okay do remember it and in the peri robin we see u shaped or v shaped cleft this is also the peculiarity of peri robin it can involve soft palate and hard palate or both as well other associated anomalies there would be hearing loss nasal deformity dental and filtral malformation syndactyly and dysplastic phalanges we'll study about syndactyly in the further slides okay while studying apert and cns defects like mental retardation might also be seen with this and hyperextensible joints can also be seen right now apert syndrome which is also known as acrocephalosyndactyly you also have to remember the other names of all these syndromes okay mode of inheritance is autosomal dominant and there is craniosynostosis along with craniofacial anomalies okay and severe symmetrical syndactyly of hands and feet there would be missense substitution mutation involving fgfr2 which means fibroblast growth factor receptor 2 okay this is the name of our gene fgfr2 you have to remember it okay and uh, this syndrome is more commonly seen with asians okay so guys here in this picture you can see the syndactyly okay which means partly or the complete fusion of the fingers of hands and toes right now mitten hands and soak feet this is the peculiar feature of apert syndrome okay here in this image you can see incomplete syndactyly and complete syndactyly okay if the fusion has occurred partly it is incomplete and if there is complete fusion between the fingers or the fingers of the toes then then it is complete syndactyly okay and this is the very peculiar image of apert syndrome okay which are called mitten hands and soak feet now the clinical features it involves coronal suture guys pay attention to it okay with suture coronal suture is affected here resulting in acrocephaly brachycephaly flat occiput and high prominent forehead as you can see in this image okay and low set ears quite evident over here then down slanting of the palpebral fissures okay in this lateral picture you can notice it more evidently then hypertelorism okay increased distance between the two eyes proptosis and exophthalmos depressed nasal bridge again peculiarity of apert syndrome you can easily mark out then parrot beaked appearance okay in the lateral picture you can see this is a parrot beaked appearance then prominent mandible and maxillary hypoplasia drooping angle of mouth okay then high arched palate is seen with apert patient bifid uvula cleft palate can also be seen and cns and cvs defects can also be can also be seen 
तो गाइज यू हैव टू बी वेरी थरो विद द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स ऑफ ऑल दी सिंड्रोम्स बिकॉज दे माइट मेक इट अ केस बेस्ड क्वेश्चन ओके दे कैन प्रेजेंट इट इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एज अ केस लाइक देर इज अ चाइल्ड विद this image and it has prominent mandible and maxillary hypoplasia drooping of angle of mouth depressed nasal bridge and low set of ears so which syndrome this patient is suffering from so this is the clinical application of this syndrome okay they can ask you in this format also so for this reason you have to be very thorough with all the clinical features of all the symptom of all the syndromes okay and the pictures of this syndromes can be asked in your image based as well okay so let's practice some of which okay bird like or fish like face okay it is seen in which syndrome yes trichocoli or mandibular facial okay when it comes to mandibular facial dysostosis or trichocoli the peculiarity which you will see is hypoplasia of malar bones okay this is very peculiarly seen here and then what you see is uh hypertellurism okay then anti mongoloid slant these are the other features but bird like or fish like face this term is used for trichocoli right parrot beaked appearance this was the peculiarity of apert syndrome right here you can see quite evidently okay this is a parrot beaked appearance seen in apert syndrome then frog face frog face was characteristic of krausen syndrome right craniofacial dysostosis i'll see you in the next part of this video don't forget to hit the like button and share and subscribe thank you